From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Tonight on Q2, violence once again appears on the upswing in Billings. I got up and peeked out the window and there were more cops out there and I used the city Billings had. We'll have the latest after another officer involved shooting. Plus a scary experience for one eight-year-old girl. I didn't know what to do, so it really hurt. Now the parents are demanding more be done after their daughter was attacked by a dog. And three major voting laws take center stage in a Billings courtroom. What is not okay is to needlessly complicate the fundamentals of a democratic system. The MTN News starts right now. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for starting your week with us. I'm Russ Riesinger. A 22-year-old Billings man is still in critical but stable condition after he was shot by a Billings police officer late Friday night during a domestic violence call. Our Casey Conlon has the latest details on the fourth officer involved shooting so far this year. Shortly after 11 p.m. Friday night, Billings police officer Ryland Nelson fired a single gunshot that hit the suspect right here in this alley off of 6th Street West in between Avenue F and Park Hill Drive. My bedroom was, was both beautiful psychedelic red and blue you ever saw. The shot happened right outside Richard Rockwell's bedroom window about 30 minutes after he had fallen fast asleep. I got woke up by a batch of yelling and screaming and right after that I heard the gunshot go off. Our officers made every attempt to resolve this. Police Chief Rich St. John walked the public through the incident Monday morning. Officers originally responded to a duplex on the 1800 block of 6th after neighbors called saying a woman was with them after an argument with her highly intoxicated boyfriend in the apartment next door. Shortly thereafter, officers heard a single gunshot. Minutes later, the suspect, a 22-year-old white man, emerged with a cell phone in his hand. It gave him instructions to stop and get on the ground. The suspect refused to comply and walked off the porch and onto the sidewalk where he began to head north. Officers then noticed a gun was tucked into the suspect's waistband. Police say the suspect told them he was going to put the gun on the ground. Officers told him not to touch it, but they say again he didn't comply. He grabbed the gun and began to pull it from his waistband. At that point, Officer Rylan Nelson fired one round from his department-issued handgun at the suspect striking him in the lower abdomen. This is Nelson's second officer-involved shooting in two years. He was one of two officers who fired fatal shots at Cole's Stump in October 2020, an incident that was ruled justifiable homicide by a coroner's inquest earlier this year. St. John said this suspect left his officers no choice. The uh, suspect was directed to get on the ground, stop moving, show his hands, and don't touch the gun a total of 73 times. 73 times uh, we were given those instructions and failed to comply. Police are not releasing the name of the suspect because no arrests have been made as of yet. In Billings, Casey Conlon, MTN News. One of the big concerns that Chief St. John brought up in that news conference today is the increase of crimes involving guns here in Billings. Police say they are seeing more guns on the streets than ever, and a lot of criminals are carrying them. Take a look at this video that was posted on the Billings Neighborhood Watch page of a man who broke into a house and stole a purse while the owner was inside. The victim, whose security cameras captured the intruder, told us she believes he was armed with a gun. The chief says guns are being used in all kinds of crimes. We have a significant um, incidence of, of violent crime where guns are prevalent. They are used in everything. Um, and we're seeing a younger and younger crowd use them. It's easy to pull the trigger. Um, when you start talking about teenagers that are with the gunplay, I mean, obviously their ability to work through some things and um, they, they're much more impulsive than, than others may be. So we're seeing a high propensity to solve problems with firearms. The chief says that in the last six months, the street crimes unit alone has confiscated more than 120 guns. Billings family is looking for more action tonight after their eight-year-old girl was attacked by a dog while riding her bike. Animal Control has issued a citation, but the family argues more needs to be done about a situation that could have ended much worse. Arlena Howder has the story. 
An eight-year-old Billings girl is recovering after her parents say that she was attacked by a neighbor's dog on this street. They say animal control issued a citation to the dog's owner, but they don't think that's enough. Eight-year-old Ariana has spent a lot of time biking around her Billings Heights neighborhood, so her parents weren't too concerned when she took off for a birthday party at a friend's house Saturday morning. But that changed in a matter of seconds. I had received a call that she had been attacked by a dog. It turns out the gate to a neighbor's yard was open as Ariana biked by. The dog had started to walk out real slow, and then she looked over and the dog lunged at her and latched onto her arm and wouldn't let go. Erica Holloway saw the attack. I saw the dog lunge, so I immediately jumped up, ran over there and told my friend who was with me to call 911. Erica rushed Ariana and her family to the emergency room. Thankfully, she's okay, but the attack was traumatizing. I thought I was gonna die or something like that. And that's why Ariana's father, Aaron, called animal control. He wants the dog to be put down, worried what happened to his daughter could happen again. In 10 days, what's gonna happen? You know, maybe some other kid will be riding down the street and they'll get attacked too. I tried to reach the owner of the German Shepherd Monday, but no one answered the door. And we also reached out to Billings Animal Control. It turns out the dog owner was issued a citation and has been told to quarantine the animal indoors for 10 days, but it'll ultimately be up to a judge to decide the dog's fate. Obviously it's an aggressive animal and I feel like something should be done. While Aaron is thankful his daughter will recover, he fears the dog will be allowed to stay. And he's worried about what that could mean, not only for his daughter, but other kids who play nearby. It could have been a lot worse than it already is. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Voting rights in Montana are on trial. As a Billings judge hears arguments over three new laws passed by the state legislature, all affecting Montanans at the polls. MPN's Jackie Coffin takes us inside the courtroom for opening arguments. There's a lot of attention right now on the courtroom of Judge Michael G. Moses here in Yellowstone County District Court as he ponders the fate of three controversial voting laws, but that decision is still a few weeks out. I'm set for trial. Many across Montana will be closely watching what happens inside this Billings courtroom over the next two weeks. 11 plaintiffs are suing Montana Secretary of State Christy Jacobson, including the Montana Democratic Party and Western Native Voice, claiming three new laws passed during the 2021 legislative session violate Montanans' constitutional rights. And that democracy is better when more eligible voters can access the franchise. And that's what this case is about. And we believe that when the court hears all of the testimony and evidence in this matter, it will come to one and only conclusion that these three statutes are constitutional. Together, the laws end same-day voter registration, require students use other forms of identification if they're using student IDs while voting, and ban people from getting paid to collect and turn in ballots on behalf of others. The bills immediately drew legal challenge from voting rights groups who say all of them make it harder for certain Montanans to vote, especially young people and Native Americans. What is not okay is to needlessly complicate the fundamentals of a democratic system. And what is far from okay is to make that complication affect particularly one portion of the population. But the state argues the changes were long overdue, claiming the laws make Montana elections safer, reduce fraud and error, and actually improve accessibility. Paid ballot collection, especially by partisan organizations, has the potential to undermine voter confidence in the security and integrity of elections in Montana. The next weeks of the trial will largely center around witness testimony. Those three new laws are already in place, while their future is debated in court. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. 
Let's start right in with Doppler radar and show you some storms developing here, especially Fergus County around Lewistown and then some southward too. Are you around uh, Grable? Maybe not feeling as so much right in town as it starts to move up into the Bighorns. And a lot of the storms over the next couple of days are going to be affecting mainly the higher elevations. But with this activity will also come some strong winds. We're starting to lose some of the moisture that we saw over the weekend. You can see that other than where the dew point is up around Lewistown, where I was showing you those thunderstorms, the numbers are down, an indication that we're going to see storms that produce more wind and less rainfall. Some of those winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Speaking of what you're going to see in the sky, Matt Hidalgo is here to tell us about what's to expect with air quality. As you look out over the rims, you may notice the skies are a bit smokier compared to last week. This is partly because of the deep draw fire burning in the prior mountains to our south near Bridger. But air quality is much better than this time last year. What a difference a year makes. This time last year, skies were hazy and filled with ash and smoke, but that's not the case this year. It's a significantly better year than previous than last year. And Brandon McGuire is with the Montana Department of Environmental Quality. He says fire season last year started with a bang and never let up. Several major fires started burning in June, including the Robertson Draw Fire, which started just outside Red Lodge on June 13th, ultimately burning about 30,000 acres. Nationwide, more than 5.5 million acres of land had burned across the U.S. by September, making air quality a huge concern. Definitely over half of the days above the good category, so, in, so that would be like the moderate or, or worse. The Department of Environmental Quality closely monitors air quality in Montana. There are 20 sensors laid out across Montana, keeping an eye on what we can't really see. This air monitoring station is in Lockwood. So the ones that we're talking about monitor PM 2.5, which is particulate matter, captures all the smoke essentially is the big contributor. Um, and while this year the air quality is much better than one year ago, Brandon McGuire says we are trending in the wrong direction. A hotter and drier climate has resulted in more fires and smokier skies across Montana and the West more years than not. Definitely goes up and down year by year uh, variability, but overall there's kind of a general uptick in um, smoke production and smoke impacts. In Billings, I'm Matthew Hidalgo, MTN News. Still ahead on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, Republicans on the Montana legislature are once again calling for a special session. We'll tell you why next. And later, we'll take you inside a new Billings daycare that will bring back memories of a popular Eddie Murphy movie. Keep it here.